Hi, welcome to Diva Dialogue. I'm Coach Deb, and we talk about anything and everything we want to. And today, our subject is going to be coaching, why you need a coach. What's up with coaching? And we have my first trainer I took the first coaching class that I took was from this lovely woman that I am so excited to be interviewing I can't even tell you Barbara Wainwright welcome Barbara thank you so much Deb it's so great to be here cool hey and um somebody has a birthday tomorrow (laughs) oh yeah that would be me (laughs) (laughs) happy birthday a day early I toast you oh thank you (laughs) You're welcome. So um, you and I have uh, known each other now for almost nine years, and every now and then we touch base, but I so admire everything that you have done in the coaching field and writing, and you're like one of my heroes and mentors. Oh, Thank you. You're That's welcome. really a beautiful thing to say. I appreciate that. And I also yeah. have California envy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, um, I, I love the weather in California. You just can't beat it, I don't think. Nope. Nope, I lived there for 20 years, and I never missed the weather in Ohio and Michigan when I lived there, but I missed the weather in California all winter <laughs> long. <laughs> I bet you do. Oh, my so gosh. So tell us how you yeah. got into the coaching field. Okay, I'd love to share that story. You know, um, I was working as a software development consultant for a good 20 years, and the last 10 years of that, I knew there was something else that I was supposed to be doing. I just had that inner knowing. And I was searching that whole time. I was taking a lot of different classes in different genres. I, I took a hypnosis class. I took classes on crystals and how they work with us and um, classes on meditation. And I learned how to channel and just so many different classes on personal development then I and and all the time searching for what is it that I'm supposed to be doing because I knew there was something else besides software development working with computers all the time and one day I stumbled across a coaching website where it was talking about coaching and I went this is it this is what I'm supposed to be doing it's just that I knew that was my path and so I flew up to Canada and got trained in coaching and started a franchise with Certified Coaches Federation at, down in California. And uh, that's how I, that's really how I got started was it was just that inner knowing when I saw it, I went, that's it. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is where I'm going to be dedicating and devoting my life to. And I just never looked back. Uh, after a couple of years, I started my own company and my own certification company, and it took quite a while before I was able to earn the university graduate level accreditation from the American Schools of Colleges and Business. So uh, once that was done, I feel like I uh, had I was very uh, accredited, and it was noteworthy at that point. So yeah, it was kind of been a long journey. I worked with a gentleman named Barry Fowler for four years, and uh, then we separated and went our separate ways. And so now I've got Wainwright Global Institute of Professional Coaching, and it's my company, and I'm really proud of what we've accomplished. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Excellent. I love that story. That's really good. You know, and that's there's a big, huge lesson in there for everybody, and it's something that I, uh, I don't want to say preach about. I highly suggests that we tune into that inner drive. I mean, there are so many people working at jobs that they were trained for, and maybe at one time they did think that it was what they were supposed to be doing. And and for that time it was. But if you have a burning desire to do something else, you're never going to feel fulfilled or complete unless you do it. Isn't that right? I believe that's true. You know, the, it's uh, we hear what's, what's really sad, Deborah, is I talk to a lot of people that tell me how unhappy they are 
in doing what they're doing. They've been working a job that they hate for years and they're just still doing that job and they haven't given themselves permission to do what it is they love. You know, and it's just, it's, it's heartbreaking because I believe that we're all here with an inner purpose, with an inner desire to do something, to, to make a difference, to leave a legacy, to uh, know that we've accomplished something and, and made a difference in somebody's lives is so rewarding. And to deny yourself that because you feel like, oh, if I, if I transition, I won't make enough money or my, I don't know what my significant other will think or how am I going to, you know, support my kids. The, the thing is that when we are following our heart and when we're on our path, the doors seem to open for us in ways that are miraculous. So it's about really tuning in, like you said, tuning into our inner knowing, our inner guidance, and just following it, trusting and following those steps. And, it, you know, the universe, I believe, doesn't throw it to us in ways that are out of control. They throw it to us in baby steps, you know, so we just take the baby steps. It was uh, like I, when I started in the coaching industry. I'd been working with computers for years, and so it's like, Everything's logical and makes sense because your one plus one always makes two on the computer. Right. <laughs> and then so switching to working with people and individuals and coaching them was a huge transition for me to get out of working with computers and start working with people. And it was uh, something that came in baby steps. So the first step was saying, yes, this is where I want to go. The second step was committing to going up to Canada and making a huge investment to go get that training and education. And then, uh, you know, just starting to take, it was, it was baby steps all the way. So the universe doesn't really throw us more than we can handle. And if we pay attention to the little messages that are coming our way, we can begin to take those little baby steps that will help us transition into the place where we are meant to be, where we're called to be, where we're most passionate in life. And that's what I love to see in the coaches that have come through the training where they're, they leave the class and they have a vision statement for where they want to go mm-hmm. and what they want to see themselves doing. And it's not long before all of that manifests as their reality. So I love the process of the coaching and, and it really does help you get on to those baby steps that you need to take to make a transition into where you're really meant to be. Amen. That's exactly how I look at it. And, you know, if you, there's a visual, and I don't know if this commercial is still on, but a couple of years ago, there was a commercial on TV about a, um, it was either insurance or buying a car or something where that, or investments, where that green light would come on the path just in front of the people that were walking on it. Do you remember that? I don't remember the I, and, I don't remember the And that was no. the first visual that I ever saw that is exactly how I look at it. So that's absolutely right. You just have to trust the the universe that if you are on the right path that you will be shown the next step. And you know what somewhere sometimes along the lines there that path veers off in a different direction and you can't yeah. be, and you you can't be afraid to check that out. Because sometimes what you're asking for isn't exactly the way you should be going. Right, right. I mean, that was a, a, there was a, a moment when I was working with Barry Fowler that, uh, you know, it's like, okay, this is a big move for me to separate and not work with him anymore and, you know, transition off and create my own coaching company. It was a big step, but I know it was the right step because that's what led to the university graduate level accreditation for my curriculum. So, you know, know, just follow the signs. signs. I think think that you can absolutely ask for signs as well, and you can make an agreement with the universe, your higher power, your spirit guides, whatever you want to call it. And when, when you make that agreement and that pact, the, the signs that you ask for will appear when it's mm. the right step. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yep, you and I think exactly alike. I love that. <laughs> I really do so much. So yeah. let's. I want to talk about the um, vision statements for. A, a, I mean, stories for a little bit here because okay. that was the class that I took. That was my first right. coaching class, and I. I mean, outside of real estate, I was in real estate for um, almost 20 years. And so I had had real estate coaches and I knew the difference that that made in my productivity. 
And it wow. was somewhere, I mean, I went from making 80000 to almost doubling that, which was phenomenal. And it, it was when the yes. market was really good, though, too. So, um, so I knew the difference that a coach could make in my life. And so when the real estate market crashed in 2009, I was looking at a different avenue to to um, walk down. And, and all of a sudden, I yeah. inherited this little bit of money and went online and found Fowler Wainwright. That was the, yes. it was the only only um, coaching school or whatever you want to call it that I, that I even tried to get into. And Stacy, wow. Stacy was her name. Was that her name? Stacy? Yeah. Yes. Was my it's, coach. Yeah. And we did those vision stories. So we, right. in, in that, in that class, um, it was, I, I think it was like six months long or something. We had to partner up with somebody that we never met um, face to face, but we had to talk on online and, uh, answer questions for each other. And then we had to write each mm-hmm. other's vision stories. And I still coach right. like that. I still coach with a vision story. So anyway, I had That's this vision beautiful. story and I read it every morning and every night. And I was so poor because the market just crashed and I pretty much right. lost everything. And I was so poor and I visioned myself, um, sitting on a deck, I'm just going to, I'm trying to condense this really quick. Uh, but I just want you to know (laughs) that this is why I love you so much. Um, I was, so in my story, I was sitting on the deck on a waterfront home and cause I had to move from, from close to water and I love being on water and, uh, and we, I, we had nothing, nothing, nothing. And within, Six months of that time, I was sitting out on my, we had come across this property that was being owner financed and it just so happened that I inherited some money right when we found that house and we moved in and boom, I was sitting out on the deck one day listening to the birds chirp, drinking a cup of tea and all of a sudden it hit me, oh my God. This is my vision story. (laughs) And I went and got that, and I sat there and cried. It was my vision story. I was living it. Yes. It's it's miraculous. It really is. And uh, it's interesting that you said six months because when we start creating the vision statement, we talk about what do you want your life to look like in 12 months from now, one year from now. And what we found statistically is that that those one-year plans and stories and visions end up taking only six months to create, huh. which is really amazing. Isn't that funny? Yes. So, you know, without – I don't know that I would be where I am today without that class. Right? I Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's so powerful when you are – I love that fact. Okay, here's, here's the way I think that it works. When it is that somebody else, is asking you the question. It allows you to go deep inside and get connected with your higher self, your spirit, whatever. You go in and you, you're in your heart center and somebody's asking you, what is it that you really want in life in this area? What is it that you want in financially, professionally? What do you want to experience in your relationships? And when you go in from the heart center, I believe it's your spirit speaking through you for your highest good. And so you create that vision statement from a, a heart based place. And it's only, I think it's only a matter of uh, six months typically that that begins to manifest in your life. And it doesn't matter how big the vision is. It might seem completely out of reach and out of touch in the moment, but your spirit is speaking through you and it's going to happen if you stay true to what you've created in your vision statement. And like you said, Deb, you listen to it every morning and every night and that's, or read it every morning and every night. That is what makes the difference. If you are helping to reprogram your